Welcome to Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. Uh, something a little bit different today. We are on the south coast of Pembrokeshire. And do uh, show you a bit of the local uh, industrial archaeology and geology. Now, this particular area is near Wiseman's Bridge, and it was uh, up until about a hundred years ago a hive of industrial activity with. Uh, coal seams cropping out in the uh, in the cliff faces here and there was a big iron industry where they used to extract the uh, iron balls uh, take the uh, waste rock off it and ship them across the bay uh, to Burry Port to the ironworks and when the they built an ironworks up in Stepperside in the early 1800s they used to take it up there it's just about a mile in land I'll show you some tunnels where they used to uh, take it through. As well as the uh, geology, you can see uh, the strata and the cliff falls coming across now and then come to what was the earth in which the coal plants lived in. But on the side, see there lots of uh, periwinkles and dog whelks and something very interesting is this uh, sand effect that's a colony of honeycomb worms they build uh, build their uh, honeycomb out of grains of sand so a very uh, very interesting environment in amongst the shale you can see what they were after with the iron you can see the uh, red colored iron and there there's a big piece again on there that's what they were looking for in the shale what you can see in front of us now is a bit of industrial archaeology what uh, people used to do is rather than hack off which was a laborious task of uh, separating the iron ore from the shale they cut these square shaped holes uh, in the rock and they used to uh, put all the iron inside and leave it there for a certain uh, while and leave the tide which would come in and naturally knock off the shale from the iron just like a like a tumble dryer effect i suppose like a washing machine effect and then they'd have the clean um, clean iron uh, for sale or to use in the local iron works clever people here's a good example now of the iron they were after but uh, not in a nodule form this time but there was a little like a little vein of it running across so that's it very very heavy no good uh, in steel making today because apparently it had uh, quite a high phosphorus content which made the iron brittle but uh, nevertheless years ago it uh, provided employment for an, an awful lot of people here's a good shot of uh, the contorted and uplifted strata now with slough across there and it's been in the distance it's horizontal and here it's about 30 degrees tipped and uh, just below us now you can see the uh, the soil in which the coal plants used to grow and in that gap uh, later on I'll show you the actual coal seam now what you can see there the shiny bit there's a slough again is uh, is a seam of uh, top quality anthracite I believe is known as a garland scene. Uh, the coal here has got a very high carbon content and when uh, burnt doesn't have any smoke. So uh, very useful for smithy work and in fact this area was uh, world renowned for um, malting barley to make, uh, to make beer because it was so pure. Just come across now and you can see the seam appearing in that 
hole over there. I'll show you that in a second. Very interesting. Now I don't recommend anybody go near the base of these cliffs because they're very flat, fragile and they keep eroding. So what I'm going to show you next is uh, an old mine, probably 200 years old, whereby the actual mine entrance, when it was originally made, was probably 50 or 60 meters that way somewhere. So the cliff has eroded back. And as we go up, you can see in front of us there, that's the old mine where probably children, because it's a very thin seam of coal, uh, you can see the coal that's left there just in front of us there is the spoil of which that piece in front of us where they dug the floor of the mine and packed in the area which they took the coal off to give them extra height but still the height's only about 18 inches to a foot anyway so it must have been horrendous work so i've just moved back now probably about 40 meters from the that old mine entrance just to show you the angle and looking up the cliff you can see uh, a sandstone uh, roof probably about 10 foot thick and above that if you can make it out there's another seam of coal see it shining there just uh, come across now a uh, nice example of uh, the fossils which were the plants that have made up uh, the coal seams. This seems to be uh, like little ferns that looks as if they were the tips of the growing plants. And all this was uh, about 250 to 300 million years ago. Here again is another example of the same. And I said about the uh, erosion uh, a few minutes earlier uh, you can see that that part of the cliff probably I know maybe a thousand tons of uh, stone and rock uh, looks as if it's uh, collapsed in the last couple of weeks but uh, what it's uh, rock fall has brought down is uh, traces of the coal from right in the top there interesting feature of this particular rockfall as you can see the surface of this uh, rock it looks as if it's been cut into uh, blocks of cheese or slices of cake uh, what we're looking at here is something very unusual and rare now this is the shale the fossilized soil of which the uh, coal plants used to grow in but the thing is, as you can see, some of the plants themselves as you, have fossilized and been replaced by iron ore. So these would have been probably the giant uh, horse tails of which uh, lamb's tail and mare's tail that you get in uh, in gardens in present day but uh, not as much as five inches across so let's show you some of the uh, faults and folds with the uh, earth movements about 150 million years ago long after the coal was formed you can see in front of us now the big fold which is uh, like an S shape above us now in the uh, top of the cliff you can see an old uh, mine that was probably an airway driven into the cliff to provide air for when they uh, drove in the levels for the coal and the iron stone so this particular area is riddled with uh, 
with mines and drifts and uh, it's quite unstable as you can right, what we're looking at here now is the fossilized ripples of uh, a silty lake bed and uh, that might be a fossil I'm not sure but uh, that was a ripple of water about 250 million years ago looking across the strata now which is obviously folded and the weaker parts of the fold have been eroded by the waves to form caves uh, I don't think that'll be long before it collapses come back for another look now at this fossilized uh, forest uh, these uh, as I explained before are what remains of the giant horse tails if you look at uh, this one in particular you can see the actual growth ring inside it so these would have been I don't know 20 30 feet tall and and this would have been the, the soil of the mud at the bottom of the swamp it grew in and these were the actual plants that uh, had formed had formed the forest that subsequently when it was covered over in other places uh, turned into coal but in this case it's turned into iron ore there's a few more fossils now these look as if they're some kind of uh, long-leaved plant they go in across that way and this way you can see the detailing in there another example in front of us now of uh, a level driven into the cliff for some reason either for ventilation or to get at the iron ore uh, there's no plans or maps so uh, who knows looking at the uh, contorted uh, coal seams now and the uh, sandstone as you can see it's uh, quite a mess up there hell of a force of nature but coming down to this rock in front of me you can see where there's some iron stone with a preserved it looks like a, a snake but it's not it's actually the imprint of uh, the roots of some of the trees that uh, formed the uh, coal seams uh, known as uh, stigmaria so that's that's the the rootlet of the tree and there's another little piece here which is it looks like uh, some form of uh, horse tail which we saw earlier on in the preserved forest and in between you can see if you get focused on there uh, a lot of iron pyrites or fool's gold and a uh, little flex of it there as well a lovely part of the world I mentioned earlier about the tunnel they drove through the cliff into the valley uh, behind about three quarters of a mile till they got inland and uh, they used to use it to take the coal and the iron ore into into the iron works at step aside this has obviously uh, collapsed in this is probably built in the 1830s 1840s I suppose but uh, not that big and can you imagine pushing uh, a drum or a car through there not big at all this bit's more uh, geography than geology really this is uh, part of, uh, of the storm beach whereby the eroded cliffs are sorted by the waves into different sized boulders and cobbles so you've got the bigger ones on the top and they get progressively smaller as, uh, as the current drifts towards the beach.